Good evening and welcome back to 31 Horror Nights. It's October 24th and tonight's movie is Malignant. This is a film directed by James Wan who I think is up there with some of the best horror directors currently working. This man directed Saw, Insidious, The Conjuring, and The Conjuring 2. Malignant is about this woman who seems to have not prophetic dreams but like dreams where she can sort of see what's happening in another place at that time and she witnesses the murders of other people. Apparently this is also directly connected to her because it involves an imaginary friend that she had as a child named Gabriel. And Gabriel doesn't appear to be all that friendly or imaginary. One thing that had come up when I found out about this movie is that there's apparently a big twist at the end. Hopefully this isn't gonna be like Goodnight Mommy where me even knowing that there is going to be a twist allows me to see it even quicker than I normally would. Then again, that movie was very bad at hiding its twist, and hopefully this one isn't. Now that I've seen the trailer, I can at least guess what I think the twist might be. I guess I'll figure out if I'm right or not. James Wan movies tend to have a combination of really clever scares and good characters. I hope I can expect more of that in Malignant. I'm gonna go check it out. This is one of the few times I wish I was actually recording my face, because if you saw the look on my face right now... Alright, I can't split this review up into two parts, spoilers and non-spoilers, because everything I have to say about this movie revolves around its twist. I'm giving Malignant a 3 out of 10. It was good for like the first two thirds, and then the twist happened, and it all went south. If you don't want spoilers, you can click off now. I wouldn't recommend watching this movie anyway. But I guess if you want to experience the utter shock, disgust, and disappointment that I felt upon watching this movie for the first time, be my guest. What really sucks is that this movie could have been good. <laughs> Frankenstein's Army could never have been a good movie. The Mist could never have been a good movie. This had a chance. This movie didn't need a complete overhaul, it just needed for them to not do the stupid twist they ended up doing. And I won't leave you in suspense any longer like the movie does. The movie's twist is that Gabriel is actually the main character Madison's conjoined twin. Except they're not really twins, it's more like he's a parasitic being melded with her back. If you've heard of the movie Basket Case, it's basically that. Except most of Gabriel was removed by surgeons, except they couldn't remove him completely because that would probably mean lobotomizing Madison, or as she was known at the time, Emily. So a little bit of Gabriel still remains in the back of her brain, and at the end of the movie, the back of her skull splits open, revealing a stupid CGI Voldemort face. And it fights and kills people and it runs around backwards. It is the goofiest thing! If you could even remotely take that seriously, good for you, you'll enjoy this movie a lot more than I did. If this movie had a goofier, more comedic tone, this might not read as stupid as it ended up being, but up until then, the movie was played completely straight, and as far as I can tell, the rest of the movie is played straight too. After seeing the trailer, I formed an idea on what I thought the twist at the end of this movie was going to be. I thought that Gabriel was a demon that was trying to possess Madison. They'd almost got her when she was a kid, but something happened at the facility that pushed him away or drove him off into her subconscious for a long time, but then he finally started waking up, and now he's trying to possess Madison. Maybe these murders are part of a ritual for him to completely take over her body. And you know what? For a good half of the movie, I thought I was right, because Gabriel displays a lot of very supernatural abilities. Gabriel being a weird, evil tumor baby twin in her head is able to explain some things, like him being able to make her see things that aren't there, but it sure doesn't explain his ability to make electronics malfunction. Plus, one of the first scares in the movie, which they showed off in the trailer, a character thinks that someone is watching TV with the lights off, but when they turn the light on, there's no one there. But there is a depression in the couch that slowly fills in, like something invisible was sitting there and getting up. How does that make any sense with the brain tumor explanation? If that was just a hallucination that he showed Madison, I have no idea why he would do that. He also does things like crawl on ceilings and have super strength. I think they try to BS an explanation with like being able to use 100% of the muscles in Madison's body or something. 
I almost thought that this movie started out as like a demon possession type of thing, but the studio came in and made them change it, which is why the movie feels so at odds with itself sometimes. But I looked it up and there's no indication of that, at least none that I could find. But even if that was the case, that's just moving the goalposts. Someone somewhere had to think that this was a good idea. And for the life of me, I have no idea why. It's so bizarre to see Madison, or I guess Gabriel at that point, walk around backwards and crab walk. Except we saw extended scenes already in the movie of the Gabriel possessed Madison running around totally normally. There was a chase scene and he didn't move like someone who was moving backwards. Maybe you could make the argument that he was actually moving forwards and the hair was just in the way. But then why the backwards thing at the end? Considering the title of the movie, and especially the um, first part with the flashback to the hospital and the opening credits, I thought this was going to be almost like a medical representation of a demonic possession. Like this demonic entity manifests itself as like a brain tumor or something inside Madison. But then the movie was starting to make me think that maybe it was like an evil twin or something? Then the twin died and its ghost is haunting her? Either of those would have been so much better than the Voldemort tumor growing out of the back of her head. The reveal is in a tape that was found at the abandoned hospital. And the sight of this stupid spine armed weird head thing growing out of the back of this little girl in another movie could have been comedic. But I can't really see it like that because the rest of the movie was fine and serious up until then. I almost wanted to just give up on this movie, but I was thinking like, okay, how are they going to end things? And the ending was stupid too. The movie begins with her being pregnant. She has an abusive boyfriend, or I guess used to be a lot more abusive as an alcoholic, and he pushes her and the back of her head hits the wall. And whenever she would black out and see visions of Gabriel killing people, there would be blood coming from the back of her head. Apparently, that shove into the wall was what reawakened Gabriel. Because I'm sure that he never pushed her into a wall when he was actively being an alcoholic. They established in the movie, he used to be a lot worse. So I guess that she just got really unlucky that one time. And by the way, for the most part, Gabriel has a pretty set agenda of the people that he wants to kill. The ones that removed him, called him cancer, and abandoned him. But the first one dead is that boyfriend, which doesn't really make that much sense in the revenge plot because Gabriel didn't even know this guy. He either shouldn't care about Madison's new boyfriend or appreciate the fact that that shove brought him out of hibernation. They also establish that Madison repeatedly miscarries babies. And Madison's adoptive sister, Sydney, who's one of the other main characters, tells Madison that Gabriel had been causing the miscarries and kind of feeding on the fetuses. How she could possibly know that or feel confident enough to assert that is anybody's guess. But what's even worse is that Madison hearing about that is I think the catalyst of her actually fighting back against Gabriel and winning. And the big final confrontation between Madison and Gabriel is very underwhelming. It's just Madison saying, no, I'm in control now. And as a bonus, she can tap into her super strength now. And in slightly less stupid news, this causes her to be able to make Gabriel see things that aren't there. He makes Gabriel think that he shoots Sydney and kills her. The movie ends with Madison finally realizing that blood doesn't dictate family, she will always be Sydney's sister, and everything feels happy, but one of the light bulbs starts buzzing, which in the movie was used to indicate that Gabriel was about to attack, so they set up for a sequel. And if they ever do make a sequel, which I doubt because this movie kind of bombed, I'd love to know how they intend to make it dumber than this one. It's so baffling to me because everything else about this movie is fine. The acting, the directing, the horror, the action, it all works. But there's no part of me that can take this twist seriously. If the twist wasn't so on the nose, if it was something paranormal and is being represented by something medical, that would have been good. But instead, we get a backwards walking Voldemort tumor who can move like Neo from the Matrix. This movie wasn't just bad, it was a huge disappointment to me. And if you have opinions, I'd love to hear them because watching this movie made me feel like I had my own demonic tumor driving me crazy. Alright, I'll see you guys tomorrow.